Hello viewers, this Dow Too Fast here. In this video, I'll show you this 10 inch full screen LCD rear view mirror dash cam. This one here is the Acumen XR10. This dash cam comes with both a front camera and a rear camera. Both record in full HD 1080p at 30 frames per second, and it does record both simultaneously while you drive. The LCD display is a touch screen. You can stream the live video from either the front or rear camera on the display. With a live view, you'll be able to see everything happening around your vehicle. I'll go over all the features and functions in this video, so stay tuned. Let's first have a look at the box. On the side, it shows you some of the features. The dash cam has built-in G-Sensor. Both cameras have a wide-angle lens. It has motion detection, loop recording, multi-touch widescreen, full HD 1080p recording, and backup guidelines. There's a rear view mirror dash cam. 12 volt cigarette lighter power cable, rear camera cable, and a rear camera, mounting clips, microfiber cleaning cloth, 16 gigabyte micro SD memory card, micro SD card reader, rubber straps for installing the dash cam onto your rear view mirror, user manual. Here's a look at everything you get with this dash cam. Here's a look at this XR10 dash cam. Now right now it looks like a regular mirror, but behind the mirror is a 9.66 inch color LCD touchscreen display. At the bottom of the unit, there's a power switch. Next to it is a microphone. Looking at the top of the unit, this for the optional GPS antenna. Next to it is a micro SD memory card slot. This is a connector for the rear camera. Over here is a mini USB connector for powering up the dash cam. Looking at the back, this is a speaker. In the middle is a recess switch. On both sides are the hooks for installing the rubber straps to install this onto your rear view mirror. Installation is very simple. Take the rubber strap, hook it to one end, and then wrap this around your rear view mirror and then hook it to the bottom hook. Over here is your front facing camera. You can slide this out. So depending on the width of your rear view mirror, you can adjust this to fit the mirror. You can also swivel the camera here to adjust the angle. This front camera records a 1920 by 1080p Full HD. The lens you see here is a 140 degree wide angle lens. Here I'll install the included 16 gigabyte memory card. To power the dash cam, use the included cigarette lighter power cable. Plug this in with a mini USB connector to the top of the dash cam. Plug this into your 12 volt accessory port. To install the rear camera, plug this connector to the AV in. Now you need to run this cable to the back of your vehicle. This camera is waterproof, so you can install this inside or outside your vehicle. With this red wire, you can connect it to the backup light, so when you put the car in reverse, it will switch the view to the backup view automatically. Let's power this on. Hello, Acumen. Once the unit turns on, the recording will begin automatically. That's indicated by the flashing red dot right here. Right now you're looking at the live view from the front camera. I'll show you that by placing my hand in front of the front camera. If you swipe the screen left or right, you'll toggle between the front view and the rear view. Right now you're looking at the rear camera. This is a picture-in-picture -picture view. The main display shows the rear camera, and the small picture at the top right-hand corner is the front camera. Now the screen is split between the front and the rear. Now we're back to the front view. If you tap the screen, a menu will come up. Let's start with the menu item on the right side. There's a lock icon. If you tap this, this video clip will be locked. Where you'll use this, if you're driving along and you see something happening, you can lock this video clip so it will not be overwritten. If you tap it again, it will unlock it. Next to it is a microphone. If you tap this icon, it will mute the microphone. Once again, unmute it. Right here is a camera icon. This will take a picture. In the middle is a record icon. This will stop the recording. Touch it again to start the recording. There's a brightness icon. Here you can adjust the brightness of a screen. There's a playback icon. On the left side are the categories of the folders. First one is regular recording. Next one is the lock videos, pictures, motion detection, 
And the last one is a rear camera. You scroll through the different files, select it, and it'll play back. You can delete it. This icon on the left will take you to the home screen. If you select streaming media, it'll take you to the rear camera view. At the bottom here is a microphone. You can also mute the microphone. If you select recorder, it'll take you to the front camera view. On the right side, there are a couple of menu items you can select. You can take a still picture. You can select playback. You can turn on ADAS. By default, the ADAS is turned off. You can turn it on. And with that, you get lane departure warning and forward collision warning. Here you can select format to format the micro SD memory card. At the bottom here is the settings icon. First menu item, movie mode. You can select 1080p or 720p for the front camera. Movie clip time, this is the loop recording. You can select one, two, or three minutes. I'll change this to two minutes. Sound record is a microphone. You can turn on or off. Power off, so if the dash cam is not recording, It'll turn off automatically after one minute or three minutes. I'll leave this off. Clock setting. Here you can set the day and time. Language. You can select different languages. Flicker, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Screensaver mode. So while it's recording, you can have the display to remain on or turn off or reduce the brightness or turn off after a period of time. I'm gonna turn off screensaver. So the display will remain on. Protect level. This is a G sensor setting. Default is middle. You can set it to off, high, middle, or low. Now with the G sensor, if the dash cam detects an impact to the vehicle, it will automatically lock that video clip so it will not be overwritten. Parking monitor. By default is off. You can set it for high, middle, or low. Now with the parking mode, the dash cam will operate using its internal rechargeable battery. With the ignition off and the vehicle parked, if the dash cam detects an impact to the vehicle, it will turn on automatically and record a 10 to 20 second video and power itself off. Now that video is locked, so you can go back and review it later. Volume. Here you can set the volume of the speaker. Reset setup will allow you to restore the setting back to factory default. Format SD card will allow you to format the memory card. And the last item is firmware version. When you're done with the setting, you can go back or go to home. Now if you turn off the ignition, the unit will power off automatically. So let's take this to the vehicle, get it installed, and we'll check out the display on this LCD screen, and also the daytime and nighttime video recording. To install the mirror dash cam, wrap the rubber straps behind the rear view mirror, and then clip it to the bottom hook. Don't forget to remove the protective film. Connect the power cable. Now the power cable is 11 feet long, so that will give you enough length to run up to the headliner over to the A-pillar and down to your center console. Connect the rear camera cable. It's 19 feet long, and you need to run that all the way to the back of the vehicle. Plug the power adapter into the 12 volt accessory port. To install the rear camera, you can use a double sided tape to stick this directly onto the back window, or if you want to install this outside the vehicle, you can also use the included screws to mount it by the license plate or somewhere on the back hatch. At the back of the camera, you have this cable that comes out. It connects to this connector on the cable you ran to the back. With this red wire, you have the option to connect it to the backup light. If you do that, when you put the car in reverse, the display on the screen will switch to a lower angle view so you can use it as a backup camera. I ran this cable to the back, then tuck the cable behind this rubber molding. With the angle of the back window, if I mount the camera onto the window, the camera will be pointing too low. So what I'll do is mount the camera onto this trim right here and this will give me the proper angle to the back. Connect the two cables together, and then tuck the rest of the cable behind here. Here I'm extending the red wire, so I can run the wire all the way to the backup light. Now the backup light on this vehicle is located on the rear hatch right here. There's an access panel I can remove. Right here is a backup light bulb. I'll need to connect that red wire onto the positive wire of this backup light. Here I'll install T-tap. So I ran my own red wire all the way to the back here, connect it to the T-tap, reinstall the lights, reinstall the cover. Here's a look at the installed mirror. Now turn on the ignition. Hello, 
Right now showing you the rear view, if I swipe the screen, this is a split view with the left side showing you the rear camera and the right side showing you the front camera. There's a front view. There's a backup view. So when you put the car in reverse, it will automatically switch to this view. Now we're back to the rear view. Now if I go to the front camera, I can swipe up and down to adjust the angle of view. I can do the same thing with the backup view. Let me show you what happened when I put the car in reverse. With that red wire connected to the backup light, once I put the car in reverse, the display will automatically switch to the backup view. Now in this view, I can adjust the angle. Now I'll put the car back into park, and it'll switch back to the regular view. Now if you're driving along, and you want to turn off the LCD, there's a power switch at the bottom right here. Just press it, the LCD will turn off. You can press it again, or tap the screen. The display will come back on. Let me show you a benefit of having a rear view mirror dash cam. Now as you can see, my rear cargo area is filled with stuff, and I'm not able to see out the back window. And if you have a regular rear view mirror, you're also not able to see out the back window. But with this system, I can turn on the LCD display and have a clear view of the back of the vehicle. After testing this Acumen XR10 full rear view mirror dash cam, the unit performed very well. The user interface is very easy to use. With a touchscreen display, you can swipe the screen to switch between the front view and the rear view. The image you see on the LCD display is very clear, but do keep in mind on a very sunny day, you will have glare on the screen. This is common with all rear view mirror dash cam. In those instances, you can press the power switch and turn off the LCD. 
The mirror itself has very good optics and you can use it just like you would with a regular rear view mirror. I found the daytime and nighttime video recording to be very good. It captures a lot of the details one would expect to see in a full HD video. Now I did test the ADAS function and it's far from perfect. The unit constantly beep while driving. It's best that you leave the ADAS feature off. Overall, this is a very good dash cam. The build quality is good. Installation is straightforward. One thing I would suggest is get a bigger memory card. The included 16 GB memory card will give you about an hour and 15 minutes of recording time. Now you can install up to a maximum of 128 GB size. At the time of this review, you can get this on Amazon for $129. There is also a coupon you can apply below the price to get additional savings. So check out the link below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to click on a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button to support this channel. Also click on the notification bell so you'll get notified of my new videos. Thank you and have an awesome day.